Hey everyone, today we're going to be making these weird arm things here, I don't know what they're called. Um, by the time I get this video finished I'll have a name for it, but whatever these parts are, those blue flip arm things that flip out, mine aren't going to flip out, they're just going to be fitted in and that's it. Um, but we're making these two today. Rather than have to mark it all these out again, I've got to make it really easy for you. Grab a piece of A4 paper. you'll have a template, call that one a, number one, the top one A and then the second one B so you can always remember which one's which. When you finish you'll have that. You're going to cut that out and that's going to be your template for the top one. Do the same for the bottom one and then we go on to the next step. And then once you've cut the templates you just want to trim them up so they fit neatly. In the holes I've got to trim the ends off mine a little bit because they're sitting out a bit. But you want to make them so they just fit neatly inside because they're going to be wrapped around the timber. And what you need next is some 12mm MDF. Now this piece here is a mistake I made when I was making the ring for the dome, but I'm going to use it here. So you basically want to cut the diameter. This has to be cut to the diameter of your barrel, which is 400 millimeters in my case. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in 25 millimeters and cut all the way around, and then we're going to cut it off in sections to the length of For that is we're going to put three of these on top of each other to get the thickness we want here. And then we'll have that curved part made we can make the notched up parts afterwards. I've cut the ring out, it's 25 millimeters from here to here. Don't cut any longer than that because you're going to have to cut it that way. Once you layer two or three pieces together, we're going to have to cut it that way to get some shape into it. Okay, so make that as make that 20 mil if you want to, but uh, don't go any more than 25 millimeters. And you're going to need three pieces at the length of the template of template A and three pieces at the length of the template B. So how you get that is you just get your template, wrap it around, mark each end and cut three like that and three with the other ones. You might have to cut a few rings but you need three of each using 12mm MDF. And you'll have three pieces like this. I'm going to join them on top of each other like that. Screw them together, but they will be the pieces that go across the front of your barrel. I'm going to drill and fill these so you can't actually see any joins later on, but at the moment, that's what you got. So you need three for this one and three for the other one. Now it's quite rough. There's a hole inside from where there was an old drill hole, but it's rough, but that's the shape. Once you get it to that shape, don't do any more to it, let it sit, and then we're going to go over to barrel and cut out the other skin so we can see how close we are to the right shape. This is going to require some trimming to make it fit around where it's supposed to fit and then we've got to scallop it this way in places. Alright, I cut this out with a Dremel, um, just closer to the edge and then I used a small hacksaw blade to take out the corners to make it easier so now you've got that all the way through um, and then I used sandpaper just to clean it all up. So looking pretty good. Now what we're going to do is get our pieces, the piece that we've cut. For instance this is part A, we'll see obviously it's not going to be any very close to where it needs to be but it'll give us a beginning of how close it has to be. Right. It's not bad though. A little bit of work, but it'll be all right. Next bit's a bit tricky. You have to draw a line across here, those two point and that point there. Okay, and then draw a line across there. How it's going to work is we're going to cut down. So basically, draw a line across here, down about seven millimeters to that point, and across to that point seven millimeters. So we get a jigsaw cut through there, jigsaw cut through here at an angle, and then we've got to cut that straight bit out. It's the only shaping of the outside edge you have to do, and then the rest is just making it fit, filling it, sanding it, and so on. So this was not easy to do, but I messed up that one a little bit with the chisel. Basically what I did is I 
cut down here with a handsaw, down here with a jigsaw, and then across the middle here I just drilled small holes with a drill and then chisel it out slowly. I did a better job of the second one than I did with the first one. But you want the side, you don't want that hole by the way, but you want the side to look like that. Right. So now all I have to do now is to check that they fit and they do fit how I want them, so I've just got to fill them, sand them, and you've got to round this these two small ends, you've got to round that corner off. Because that's supposed to be where it swivels from, if it was to swivel. So round it off, get a, just get a coin and round the edge off. And then we can nail it all together. So it doesn't move. Just a bit of flex there, so put some nails in there. You can sand it all, fill it, paint it, and so on. So I've just filled where I've made the mistakes and filled over the joins. I've been a bit liberal with it because I just want to sand it off and create, get the shape back. I've done the ends as well and I've curved the edge. So basically they're all sanded in the right shape and they fit my body of uh, R2 really well. Just so we'll let them dry and then sand them. Once they're sanded, put some PVA glue all over the front and the parts you see because the PVA glue will seal it. And hit it with some spray putty, sand that back, and we're going to paint them blue. And then they're finished once they're painted. Now that these are dry, I'm going to sand them all and give them the shape they need. And then I'm going to paint the whole thing in PVA glue before I hit it with any spray putty. pretty good. Imagine what a bit of filler will do. A bit of filler in here a bit. But overall, they look really nice. These have come up so well. To give them a sand now, just take those lines out. Remember to always keep A and B. So you know, I mark it on the bottom so you know which one's which. Once I sand that putty, I'll be painting it blue. That looks so cool. What I also did is I hit them with some clear over the top as well once the blue would dry. Um, but apart from the little pit in here, which I can live with, they look really, really nice. There you have it.